Just think about what it'll be like when people look back on Justin Trudeau's reign as the Prime Minister of Canada 30 years from now. The number one thing they'll look back on is how the Liberals ran a Ponzi scheme for 10 consecutive years. Quite the shameful legacy, isn't it? Now before launching into this, I just want to let you guys know I was so excited yesterday. I had ordered a brand new microphone. The channel has been doing very well, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to reinvest into this channel and I'm gonna get even better gear. And then it arrived and surprise, surprise, there's no plug-in cable. So now I have to return it and get one that can actually fit into my laptop. So yeah, so you're gonna get better quality sound very shortly. Now, let's talk about the polls showing is that a conservative government is inevitable come October 2025. With this in mind, the liberals are going into overdrive to push their idealist agenda to the detriment of the economy and the middle class's future. Many children in Canada face food insecurity. With that said, the food insecurity problem they face beyond any dispute is the direct result of liberal policies, of that very liberal Ponzi scheme that's been going on for the past 10 years. The $1 billion Christopher Freeland earmarked for this new food program is yet another flagrant example of the Liberals robbing Peter to pay Paul. The school food program is yet another way Canadians are picking up the tab for this godforsaken carbon tax. By this point in time, Trudeau knows the torches and pitchforks are coming out. He's gotten so desperate, he's now even resorting to publishing fake letters written by a purported ninth grader named Penny. I'll read you this fake letter now. I'm Penny. I go to Northumberland Regional High School and my friends go to the free lunch program occasionally and it really helps them when they need a healthy, delicious and free meal. I'm in grade nine and I can really see the positive impact this program has. I'm sorry if I'm laughing. It's just, this is so fake. Like no ninth grader writes like this. It, it, it goes back and forth. Anyhow, I can really see the positive impact this program has on my friends and the students here. This program is extremely important for a variety of reasons. Firstly, it provides easy access to food, something many students need. We need food to learn and get through the day properly as well. Some kids don't have access to healthy foods either, and the program provides that. These are all the reasons to invest in this. We ask your government to honor its commitment to $200 million per year for five years to develop a national school food program. We ask that you start to invest in school food in Budget 2024. Sincerely, Penny Grade 9. Anyways, I'll have a link to the letter in the description of this video so you could read it and check it out for yourself. This is hilarious. Just as hilarious though are all the people on social media who have pointed out the many ways in which it's fake. This first one shows that honor is spelt the American way. I mean, it could be an innocent mistake if she is actually in grade nine. I can see how she can miss that, but yeah, that is a tell right there, a tell worth noting. And then we have this. This is one of my favorite tweets about the whole subject. This, of course, is a real letter. And Penny, using my party language, like the word invest, which I use daily to gaslight Canadians, is purely a coincidence. Then you have this one. Take away the carbon tax and kids wouldn't need a school program. Always providing money to programs for problems you've created. Sit down. So my question simply is this. What about the Canada Child Benefit? Shortly after coming into power, Trudeau and his team took an $11 billion surplus and turned it into a $77 billion deficit to finance their rose-colored idealism. When I was a kid, my parents received $33 a month per child. Back then, it was called the baby bonus. Today, however, low-income families can receive up to $7,437 per year, or that would be $619.75 per month for each child under six years of age. Put another way, now let's say you and your coworker Mary each earn $40,000 a year. Because of the CCB, Mary will take home more simply because she has kids. You earn the same amount, you're both taxed at the same rate, but Mary absorbs the taxes taken off her coworker's paychecks by way of the CCB. You and Mary both have the same demanding workload, both have to deal with the same amount of stress, but Mary comes out better for it because you're supporting her family for her. And now you're going to do it all over again with the school food program. Does the government have a moral obligation to protect kids from the risks associated with poverty? Yes. Yes, they do. But there's a clear-cut difference between protection and outright subsidizing the raising of a child from birth to adulthood. My parents were working class and they carefully thought parenthood through before taking the plunge. 
after we were born, they committed themselves to raising us as best they could. While they graciously accepted that $66 baby bonus each month, they took care of their own children without shamelessly begging the government for handouts. Thanks to large payouts of the CCB, we have an epidemic of single moms popping out babies simply for a payday. Now that their kids will get to eat for free while at school, they get to pocket even more of those exorbitant childcare payments. So how do you feel about this program? Do you feel the CCB is too generous? or exactly what working parents in Canada need. Do we need the school food program or should the CCB be enough? Sound off in the comments. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.